Beachy in Biplane Skims Niagara River by Anonymous From the New York Times, June 28, 1911 Coffee Break Collection 25, Water This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Colleen McMahon Beachy in Biplane Skims Niagara River flies through mist of horseshoe falls and dives under upper steel bridge down gorge to rapids flight watched by one hundred and fifty thousand spectators on river banks and bridge lost to sight in spray buffalo new york june twenty seventh sweeping down from an immense height in a shower of rain lincoln beachy an aeronaut in a biplane today passed over the horseshoe falls under the steel arch bridge, on down the gorge almost to the Whirlpool Rapids, then rose, mounted again, and, shaving the wooded cliff, landed safely and unconcerned on the Canadian side. This was the first time any man had pierced the mists of the great cataract and flirted with the deadly currents in the gorge. Beachy said it was the most thrilling flight of his career, and the 150,000 persons who witnessed it seemed to be of the same opinion. Disregarding the advice of friends who declared that the conflicting air currents in the gorge would surely send him to death, Beachy started about six o'clock to test the currents, which up to then had made flying impossible. Going to a height of 2,000 feet, he pointed his plane downward and sped directly for the brink of the Horseshoe Falls. Then, hesitating on the verge, he swept up again, circled twice about the falls, and plunged. The crowds held their breath as he dived into the gorge and after he had passed under the bridge and was skimming along less than 15 feet from the tumbling water, the odds that he wouldn't get out were lowered. When almost in the spray of the Whirlpool Rapids, Beachy pointed his controls upward, and, missing the top of the gorge by a few feet, landed on the Canadian side. During the trip through the gorge, Beachy's machine rocked and tipped in terrifying fashion. He went directly beneath the middle of the bridge, the crowd watching with interest his marvelous control of the machine. The start was made from a baseball diamond on the American side of the river, about a mile from the falls and to the north. He got away nicely and then mounted upward, moving always in the direction of the cataract. His course was almost due south at the outset of the flight, and when he crossed the American falls he was about 2,000 feet in the air. In a great sweeping circle he swung toward the north and over the Horseshoe Falls. Down the river he flew, almost to the lower steel arch bridge, two miles below the falls, and then coursed to the west and then south again, always dropping as he circled. On his second circle he went well to the southwest before beginning his low flight toward the upper steel arch bridge, under which he was to pass. Swinging again to the north and traveling about fifty miles an hour, he came on probably not more than two hundred feet over the horseshoe and swishing through its spray. Once over the cataract, he lowered his plane, and rushing with the wind at a speed estimated at 60 miles an hour, he dipped quickly under the arch. As he did so, he caught some of the wash of the outlet of the power tunnel, which shoots out from the rocky side of the precipice at that point. At no time from his final dip until the time he was clear of the structure was the biplane more than 30 feet above the spume. The space through which he flew was 168 feet in height and barely 100 feet from side to side. The distance from the brink of the falls to the bridge in which he made the dip is about 400 yards. Beachy will repeat the flight tomorrow. End of Beachy in Biplane Skims Niagara River Recording by Colleen McMahon